Welcome back and welcome to Nebraska Nightly here on the Will Stemmett Sports Channel where you can get everything related to Nebraska with us players, whether that's recruiting, whether that's staff, right here. So if you like the content, please hit the like and subscribe. But let's get into this week's news. I want to start off talking about the commits that we got. We got three recruiting commits and one uh, in the portal. So let's start off with the guys coming out of high school who did commit to Nebraska in the class of 2023. I'll uh, start off with Ishmael Smith Flores. So this guy is a three-star tight end from Martin High School in Texas. He was actually uh, one of Bob Wager's kids, the uh, new tight end coach at Nebraska, who came from the high school ranks. He was head coach there. Uh, this is one of his guys. He's And we, 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 you look at uh, Smith Flores, I mean, this dude is an athlete, right? I mean, this dude is 6'6 six, six at the tight end position. He's about 200 pounds, about 210-ish. Around, right around there, and I mean, you just watch some of his film, man. Uh, a stud. I, I, he is a mismatched nightmare. He can be that in the college ranks. So I really like to get, especially we needed we needed to beef up the tight end position. We needed to get uh, one in this class, and this, this is a heck of a get. Not to mention, this guy is an Iowa legacy. His dad went to Iowa. Uh, one of the more prominent players in Iowa football history. Uh, I think his mom also went to Iowa, so um, really, really good news to get him and kind of get back in Iowa. I mean, Iowa pulled Keegan Johnson a couple years ago, and all those Iowa fans were talking, um, talking, uh, you know, trash. Uh, they got Keegan Johnson. Obviously, Keegan Johnson's not with Iowa anymore, but uh, they were talking a little bit of trash, and now we kind of get back at him with this uh, tight end get. So, and they get, I really like this get. Um, another guy, also from Martin, Texas. This one. Uh, was kind of a shock, but this was giant, uh, Jeremiah Charles. Um, this dude, I mean, you just look at, you know, his two for seven ranking doesn't really tell the whole story. I mean, he's not ranked really. Um, but this is a guy who's six one. He's a, a wide receiver, um, about, about one fifty, right. But I mean, another lanky, another tall, skinny kind of, but just a fast player, especially a wide out. Um, and this is a guy who, didn't play varsity football until last year. He didn't play football in general. He he was a basketball and track kid. That's all you know. That's what he you know. And then Bob Wager went up to him and said, "Hey, you're too you're too good of an athlete. You need to get you know on the football field for me this fall." And he did. And he put up about 500 yards receiving and a couple touchdowns. Had a really good year. Really good year, especially for his first year in varsity. Um, again, not a guy who's played football. And to have that year in a really competitive league in high school Texas football. Um, that's impressive. So it, what's really interesting about that get, the, again, only one year of playing football. Another get is they spend another scholarship. We, and I'll, I'll get to our last guy, but we now in this class have six receivers. And about, I want to say, I think we have 16 receivers overall. I could Let me check really quick here. Um, I'll take a tiny bit. But um, yeah, that overall... We have a bunch of receivers, so for them to kind of pick him specifically and say, "Hey, this is this is our guy. We're gonna go ahead and take him." They're really trying to rebuff this room. It's pretty evident. Um, yeah. So yeah, he we do have sixteen receivers on scholarship. So that's something to watch there. But I, I again, interesting get there. I, I think it's it could work work out well for us. And the last one it was the kind of the headline get. Uh, out of the out of uh, the high school ranks, Demetrius Bell commits to Nebraska. Former, he is a former Michigan State commit. He also was um, he also was a four star and still is a four star. And really, you talk, you you look at what people are saying about him. You look at his stats. I mean, I, let me pull up the stats real quick from this year. Um, he had 700 yards receiving, about 300 yards rushing. He even threw the ball a little bit. He had a 150 yards throwing the football. Uh, this year, just an overall athlete. You see why he was a four star. Uh, he, I was reading this article about him by two for seven. They're basically saying he's basically one of the most explosive guys in this class. Period. Like we're, we're talking everybody. I know people throw hyperboles around, but that's what they said. You know, compared they compared a bunch of five stars. This dude, there's there's not many players in the class of 2023 who can go from zero to 100 as quick as he can. So you like to see that, and you look, you'll watch this film. You see the exact same thing. Uh, again, another receiver there, another guy who's lanky. This guy's a little more beefed up. He's 180. Um, and th this guy can make an impact. 
saw again another really good get there. But it's it's just interesting that they're all receivers. It's all receivers. We're at 101 right now in the, in the scholarship count. And we get six receivers in this class 2023. We have Malachi Coleman uh, headlining it, of course, of Jaden Doss, Bryce Turner, Jalen Lloyd, Jeremiah Charles, and now Demetrius Bell. So really interesting gets there. And that'll basically wrap up the 2023 class. There's one other guy that I think we might get, uh, which I'll talk about um, in a little bit. But I really want to talk about Jacob Hood really quick. He commits to Nebraska. He is from Georgia. I talked about in the last video a little bit. And... Again, this guy is 6'8", 350. I mean, whew. just from a physicality standpoint, like I said last time, insane, insane. I mean, and he's he's sneaky athletic. He's a big boy, you know. And it, really, he came from Georgia. He was at Georgia for two years. He didn't play didn't play a snap at Georgia, but I mean, he, you're, if this dude, you know, works hard and puts in the effort, because a lot of this, a lot of times when guys transfer and they haven't played a snap and they're as talented as he is there might be some going on off the field but if he can get his you know his head right and you know commit to his diet commit to you know practicing and a lot of guys skip practice man so if he if he can do all that i mean he'll be on the field pretty quick because this whole line's not great um and i, I think that's a good thing because we need more guys like him man i get I, I compared him last time to bryce benhart bryce benhart's what 6 10 but all, he doesn't have any. He isn't. He's big, but he's not big. He's not um, you know, built like a lineman should be built. This guy's built like a lineman. He is big. I mean, he's a massive individual, um, and that that's gonna do dividends for us. Um, so hopefully, he gets some playing time this year. Obviously, again, not much experience, so we don't really. He's it's kind of a hit or miss prospect. Honestly, it's really hit or miss. Um, there, there's a, there's a shot he busts. There is, but there's also a chance that he could make the NFL. You know, and again, this is a guy who was a four star coming out of the class 2021. I mean, one of the most impressive offensive linemen just from a height and weight standpoint I've seen in a long time. So that really intrigues me, but I, I really like that get. Um, I think I gave it a ranking in the last video. I gave it like a C, a C ranking or something like or maybe a B of like if we were to land him. I still stand by that just because. Really, when it came to O line, I wanted experience. I wanted experience. I was number one, um, and we didn't we didn't get experience. You know, we got one guy who had a bunch of experience at Ben Scott, but Jacob Hood doesn't have any experience. It, it, does he have Does he have potential? Absolutely, but that's not really what we were looking for. We we're just looking for experience. Guys who can play. Guys who can get in the two deep. I mean, he'll be in the two deep, but he's not going to start right away. So, I want a guy who can start right away. So we'll see about that guy. Uh Last but not least, I want to bring this guy up really quickly. We have a visitor this weekend in the class of 2023. Just when you think they're done. Just when you think they're done racking up commits. Oh, there might be one more. So we have De'Aaron Barnes, who is a cornerback, six foot tall, 175, coming out of Colorado, who is coming on a visit here. And you know, when 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 guys like him, when guys take visits in late January, they're more likely they're not gonna commit. So he is on the visit. I'm not sure if he has a scholarship offer. See, he didn't report to have an offer from us. Like on his Twitter page, you look at his offers on 24-7, Air Force, Bowling Green, BYU, Nevada. I mean, nothing spectacular there. So I don't know if he actually has a, a offer from us, but he is on a visit. So that's something to watch. Um, I mean, let me check his Twitter page one, one more time, see if he has reported um, maybe having a offer from us. So yeah, he, he didn't report any offer, but he, he will be on a campus. So we'll see if that's on scholarship or not, but they're kind of, again, they're, tr they're trying to keep adding guys in 2023 class. And my opinion is, I think it's time to kind of end it, right? Like we you know, only have so many scholarships. So that is interesting. And speaking of the 2023 class, if we are counting only high school recruits, we are officially in top 25, according to 24-7. I think we're rated um, 23rd in the country. So that's compared to where we were when Scott Frost, and I keep speaking about this because it's so, it's so true. Scott Frost was taking this, this class and he was bringing it down. I mean, we, we were on pace to have one of the worst, one of the straight up worst classes Nebraska has had here um in 20 years plus probably probably in the 
the worst class in the modern era of Nebraska football. It was where Scott Frost was taking it. We had nobody, you know. Um, it, it was a it was a bad class, man. It was a bad class. And the second rule gets here, man, he, he's bringing in guys left and right. And really just getting bodies, man. That's what you want to have. Um, so, again, really, really good job. Again, didn't think that was going to happen. I really didn't. I thought we were going to maybe get around 30, 35. But for him to get in the top 25, awesome. You know, and a lot of guys kind of pulled out of nowhere. Demetrius Bell, again, this is a guy that I don't think anybody really knew who he was two weeks ago. And now he's committed, right? Um, so, really impressive job there by rule to get a top 25 class uh, and kind of pull those guys out so there's a couple other things i really want to talk about um two others specifically one of them being we're going to talk about colorado getting you know they're they're making a couple moves and we're going to talk about dylan Ryle. so let's start off with um colorado or yeah so colorado has been offering a bunch of guys in omaha metro recently that i just I talked about this last video. I did because, or it might've been two videos ago, but I was basically talking about, cause Colorado offered Daniel Kalen, right? Uh, 2024, about four, he's a four star, I believe on 24 seven, um, inside, um, the Metro, he goes to Bell West. They offered him. And I basically told the guys, Hey, you can expect to see a lot of that coming soon. Colorado is going to try to take our guys. And sure enough, within the last four days, um, within the last four days, They've offered Carter Nelson, four-star tight end from Nebraska. Caleb Pifron, three-star off a of tackle, who in my opinion is a must-get. And Tyson Terry, who's, I believe, class 2025, but he's going to be a four-star, um, no doubt, and he's a, a defensive tackle. So that, that, that that's interesting. Again, they're trying to get in. They uh, Nebraska is up and coming, and they're trying to get a piece of that. When prospects are getting better every year inside Nebraska. Um, so again, I think we're doing a really good job though of locking down in state. I think I think it was Sean Callahan who basically said he's been covering Nebraska football for 20 years and he hasn't seen a staff um, do as well tr trying to lock down the state as what's happening under rule. You know, hold that state with the great assault though. Um, you know, it, it, Sean Callahan he might hyperbole that might be a little bit of a hyperbole, but I, I, I agree that they're doing a good job. Ed Foley, I don't think I mean he's been just absolutely perusing Omaha, I mean, and, and you know, throughout the state. I mean, he went out west. Uh, a bunch of guys, Tony White's went everywhere. I think there was a bunch of, there were a bunch of coaches the other day in Bell, um, going to Bell West. Like, they were, I think Minnesota was there, Colorado was there. A um, bunch of other schools were in Omaha trying to go to Bell West because a bunch of guys at Bell West in the 2024 class, and Nebraska was also there trying to take this, saying, hey, you know, come here, right? You, you don't want to go over there. Um, and I think they're doing a good job locking down in state on uh, hopefully because again, 2024, man, bunch of good prospects. Again, Carter Nelson, I really want him. Caleb Pryfrom, really want him. Um, you, I really want Devon Hall, four star, right? Uh, Kalen, if you can't get Riola, Kalen's the next best. You got to get him. Um, so yeah, you know, of course, Caleb Benning, almost forgot about Caleb Benning. Uh, got to have him, right? So a bunch of guys there. Um, who you can potentially uh, take a crack at, and they, we we got, we got a lockdown in state, man. The problem with Frost, and I talked about this before, is that Frost would get Frost would get guys from in state, but he wouldn't get the top talent. Remember the class? I believe it was twenty twenty one. Devon Jackson. You got uh, Woods. You had the both the tight ends, uh, Ducker from uh, both of them from Bell West, Ducker and Helms. Missed on all those guys. There were four in-state four stars. He missed on every single one of them, left and right. And then you picked up a bunch of you know lower three-star guys from Lincoln and you know out west. I'll say this once: the guys in you know there's Omaha in in Nebraska recruiting. There's Omaha and there's everybody else. Omaha, everybody else. You gotta lock down Omaha. That is what. Frost, Scott Frost couldn't do. He'd keep going back to country boys. He'd keep going, trying to lock down Lincoln. I love Lincoln. I love, you know, uh, West, Western Nebraska, you know, uh, Grand Island, right? And all those others. Those are fine. But Omaha talent is not even comparable. It's incredibly better. It's so much better. You got to lock down that first and then spread out. That is, that's first priority. So 
hopefully they do a better job, and I think they are because they're just they're they've been everywhere. Um, I, again, my whole thing about Nebraska recruiting, right, is that we need to be a, especially in state recruiting. Okay, here's my take. Okay, we need to be at a posi position like Ohio State is. What Scott Frost did was he felt like he had an obligation to the state to basically take every single one of the top 1,000 players in Nebraska, right? So he'd take every single one of them. He did this in this class, too. You see, he passed up, and I don't want to you know, put any 20, or of our 2024 guys on blast, but we have a couple like Brock Knudsen and um, Sam Sledge. These guys are low three stars. He chose them over four-star prospects who were who came visiting Nebraska. He basically let those guys commit and said, oh, the four stars, oh, we don't have any room for you anymore. That's what he did because he felt like he had, you know, kind of owed it to those guys to take in-state guys. You didn't need to do that. So we need to be at a position like Ohio State. Ohio State, and just to, again, set, set the, frown, uh, the groundwork for you, they take only the top talent in Ohio. Eight, if you look at their 2023 you know, top players from Ohio. Seven of seven of the top eight players from Ohio, all these other four stars, are all committed to Ohio State, right? Every single one of the rest of them past those top eight aren't committed to Ohio State, right? Because they basically said, hey, we're going to take take the top town. And all, all the rest, they, they go off anywhere else, right? That's what we need to do. You know, there's a couple of guys who we've taken from in-state under Frost who we didn't need to take. We had no business taking. But we, we took them because we felt like we needed to. Because we needed to lock down Nebraska. No, you need to lock down the top talent from Nebraska. And then you can choose on the other guys. So hopefully Rule does that. I don't want Rule to take everybody from Nebraska. You know, see, I don't want him to, you know, go to Hastings and three uh, and see, uh, you know, top 1,000 recruits and say, oh, I need this guy because we need to lock down Nebraska. Because that's what Frost would do. You know, Frost would, again... He would take low three stars in Nebraska and take them over other four stars who were out of state. He would prioritize the low three stars over the high four stars if they were in state. That's a problem, and that can't happen under rule. But so I hope you understand what I'm saying. But that that's a big priority in my opinion is have that ability to lock down Nebraska, but be, but also be able to choose. You don't have to take everybody. So. That, that's where I want to get, and I hope that makes sense um, to all of you. So that, that's kind of my little little, little spiel about Nebraska in-state recruiting because I, I just saw it so many times at Frost. We took guys, even in the 2023 class, I named one of them, guys we shouldn't have taken. Be, and he prioritized those guys over four stars. Like, it is important to lock down in-state. It's not more important to pass up better guys for in-state guys. You, you can't do that. And that's what Frost did continuously. So you hopefully rule breaks that streak and basically says to guys say, Hey, you're an in-state three-star love you, but I'm not going to pick you over, you know, another guy who's a four-star, who's a better athlete and a better player. And I'm not going to pick you over that guy because just cause you're in state. So that's all I'm saying. Um, but that's my little, that's my little tangent there. And la last but not least, I really want to get to Dylan Royola. Um, a lot of, I've been talking about Dylan Royal a lot, and that's what you can expect just because this is the biggest recruit Nebraska has had in maybe in the, you know, the, the freaking century. You know, it, it's really, he is the biggest recruit. You got to land him. And Rule feels the exact same way. The news broke today that we have nine coaches from the staff heading down to Arizona, heading down to Chandler to visit with his family. Nine of them. And let me now remind you, let me remind you that Rule was down there in the past two weeks and Satterfield was down there this week. They're sending more down. They're sending uh, a whole band of guys there. I mean, if anybody has any, re like, Rule is pushing so hard to get him. And I, you know, that, that's what you want to see. That is exactly what you want to see. He knows how important this is. He knows how game-changing of a recruit Ryola is. You saw uh, Omar, um, Hales, is it? Omar Hales? Um, I think his name is Omar Hales. Yes, it is Omar Hales. But he was basically, he's director of player personnel. He was um, tweeting about basically how he was losing to Dylan Royal on Madden. Like, you like to see that. You have those connections with guys. Um, you know, even if that means, <laughs> even if that means, you know, losing them on Madden. So, really like to see that with the whole Dylan Royal news. They're going all out, man. And I also heard that 
they basically inform Raiola. They said, hey, any NIL deal that you get from any other school, ours will be better. Guaranteed. They basically said that to him. They said, you know, you don't have to worry about NIL because we're going to give you the best package. Um, so that's something they did tell him. And that's a little bit of inside, insider info of something they told him. That, um, uh, his dad, Dominic, was talking to Husker Online recently, basically hyping up Nebraska. So really, again, this is going to be an interesting saga. Um, really, again, I told you guys, I think Ryla will commit around July, around June. So expect that. He's going to take officials, guys. He's going to take officials. Uh, he's gonna go. He went. To, he's going to USC this weekend, and some Nebraska fans were freaking out. Who cares? He, he's gonna take visits. That's the way it is. It doesn't mean he's more interested in Southern Cal than us. It means that he's interested. He's curious. Who cares, right? So yeah, he's gonna take official officials. I expect him to take an official here. I expect him to take an official to Georgia, um, and of course to Southern Cal, and maybe one more. Um, so yeah, expect that to happen. But we're in a good place, and I was really, uh, really happy with the news that you know we're, we're we're basically sending the house, and we're saying, hey, we're gonna take, we're gonna get, we're gonna basically force you to say no. We're we're gonna hold your hand and force you to say no because we're gonna send nine of our coaches in January uh, to come pitch uh, why you should come to Nebraska. So really like to see that, man. So that's about the news for this week. Uh, again, another interesting week. I think I think the news will start to slow down a little bit once. Um, once we get into March, so I don't know, maybe videos will become once every two weeks then, but for now, they're going to be still every week on Friday, maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday. So uh, thank you guys all for joining me here on Nebraska Nightly. I am Wilson Dimon, so if you like the content, please hit the like and subscribe to me, uh, and see you in the next one.